Hello. Today we are here to talk with some young adults about stuffed animals in their lives and how it affects them. But first, some short history about the stuffed animal. Remember back when you were a child? Remember when you wanted to go to bed and you hugged your favorite stuffed animal before you went to bed? The warm, soft feeling against your face, making the world around you meaningless, and it snapped you right to the pillow for the rest of the night. Remember when you had a really bad day and you walked angrily into your room? And after pouting for a second, you see that plush up on the self, and it makes your frustrations into something a little less intense? Believe it or not, this has actually been going on for thousands of years, dating back to the time of the Egyptians. On the walls of their structures were drawings of children with what appeared to be small replica animals in their hand. They were most likely not stuffed, but they were still a toy to cherish nonetheless. The actual first stuffed animal on record was made in the year of 1880, where... Richard Steiff designed the world's first stuffed toy bear. Around the same time, Morris Mictum created the first teddy bear in 1903, named after and inspired by Theodore Teddy Roosevelt. Another popular one among the history books is the stuffed monkey made out of socks, or more traditionally known, the sock monkey. And now on to some questions. I think that owning stuffed animals says a lot about who I am because I I like to collect. I like to have items and I like to show off my items too. I like displaying things and I think people see the different varieties of stuffed animals that I have and they can kind of get a glimpse into the things that I like and who I am. Uh, not really, just that I like soft things and I like cute things, I guess. <laughs> I'd say so. I mean, kids are usually pretty clingy when they're young and parents aren't always around for hugs at like 3 in the morning when they're trying to sleep and all that or if they're at work. So, yeah. Plus it helps build like, you know, nurture and thoughts of affection and whatnot. So, sure. Absolutely. I Stuffed animals were super important to me, especially as a kid, even still now in my life. And as a kid, I could project personalities onto them, and it helped, really helped me become as creative as I am now, and um, helping create these different characters that I want to write and draw. Definitely, that is one of the biggest parts of uh, when I used to work kind of like semi-part-time as daycare. Kids loved bringing in their stuffed animals. Uh, they had close personal bonds and connections with them, especially if they were given by family member, it definitely helps in their development. Let's take a quick break to look at some interesting facts about stuffed animals. In Japan, there's actually a cafe that has a special kind of visitor. Actually, they aren't visitors. They live there and keep company for the clients of the cafe. Yes, the cafe has lots of stuffed animals to keep company to the visitors if they feel like having a special friend. I don't think so, and if I did, honestly, who cares? I'm an adult, I pay taxes, I work 40 hours a week. If I want to own a stuffed animal, I'll own a stuffed animal. I don't care. Uh, no, 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 maybe from, maybe from my mom and dad when they were asking me if I wanted to bring uh, one of them to college. But mom was fine with it, but dad was just like, he wasn't too sure about it, so just a little bit of judgment. No, because everyone, I've always collected like action figures and stuffed animals and all sorts of things ever since I was a kid and I haven't stopped since and so people that get to know me just know that's what I'm like and and I, I mean even if they were like, well, grow up and I'm like, no, it's a security thing, I, who cares, you know, what does it even mean to grow up, you know? <laughs> oh boy. Um, I actually was very determined to collect all Pokemon plush toys that were ever existed, but I realized that I needed money for like rent, bills, so that, that went away fast. But I definitely, if I see a cute stuffed animal, I'm like, I have to get that. Uh, I don't have a strong need to collect them at all. I usually... They, I usually just go on aesthetic and looks and how they feel. Uh, I probably have at least 13 of them. 
I don't really feel the need to collect them, but I do kind of like happen to be an impulsive shopper at times. I have that one from Star Wars and that Pokemon one, and then I have like a Harvest Moon cow that I got for a Secret Santa a couple years ago. Then I have like little ones I've gotten as gifts, so if anything, like people just kind of get them for me, and I put them on my shelf. The character Peter Rabbit from the English author Beatrix Potter was the first stuffed toy to be patented in 1903. Teddy bears actually can be more dangerous than real bears. At least statistically, more people have died from teddy bears. In the period from 1920 to 2010, a total of 82 Americans have been killed by real bears, but 22 people have had fatal incidents with stuffed bears every year due to unsafe play, choking on parts, or unfortunate accidents like tripping on a toy. Now, let's get back to some questions. I never did, but I had enough crazy older relatives that did, thinking like it was going to be their big ticket into eBay, like riches and whatever. I was too busy playing video games when the Beanie Baby stuff happened. Everyone was talking about the Macarena and Beanie Babies and other 90s nostalgic stuff, and it never catched on with me. I never purposely collected Beanie Babies, but my grandma insisted on getting Beanie Babies for my sister and I so we could have a college fund, and obviously Beanie Babies didn't like skyrocket like everyone thought they would, but um, I never really think of buying things to like sell them later. I'm kind of like a buy it to have it kind of person. And, yeah. I honestly, I see myself keeping it for as long as long as I need it or I want something on my bed. Definitely like when I move out and get a little independent, it's just going to come with me. Until it's torn to shreds and I can't actually own it anymore, I like keeping things that I own. Uh, they're nice to have around. I'm not like really attached or anything. So like I don't, I can see myself like when I finally move to the next place in my life, maybe leaving them with my sister and just kind of like accidentally, I can see myself accidentally forgetting them somewhere too because that's something that I would do forever. I'll never stop.